Hey guys, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and I'm back with another Last Week in Vegan. The first story of the day is about milk and whether or not it helps us to grow taller and whether or not we care. So this is coming from a CBC article which posed the question, does drinking cow's milk make children grow taller? A study looking at 5,000 children between the ages of two and six found that on average, a three-year-old that was drinking three cups of cow's milk a day was 1.5 centimeters taller than those who weren't. Whether the other type of milk they were drinking was goat's milk or plant-based milks. Now, your reaction might be similar to mine, which is 1.5 centimeters, really? But they do make a good point that this is in three-year-olds, and in a three-year-old, 1.5 centimeters isn't a tiny difference. But then we get into the whole other part of the equation that they never even thought to question in this CBC article, which is, why do we care? Why do we want three-year-olds to be, on average, 1.5 centimeters taller? I'm pretty tall for a woman, I'm 5 foot 10, I tend to stand heads and shoulders over the vast majority of the people that I walk past on the street in downtown Toronto, whether they be women or men, but that doesn't make me better for some reason. I don't feel like I'm more of a complete human because I happen to be taller than other people, and shorter people aren't inherently less healthy, which is something that this article claims, that taller children or faster rates of growth indicate more health. Because we also know that that's not true. You can grow too fast. And this is a problem we see a lot in kids nowadays where they reach puberty far earlier and this causes health problems later in life. Like a higher risk of certain types of cancers in women who started their periods earlier than others. And this rapid growth is caused by consuming products like dairy milk. So this study is telling us we should care about 1.5 centimeters, that it's not an insignificant difference but my question is, is it 1.5 centimeters in the wrong direction? No hate against tall people. Again, I am very tall myself, but we can't deny the fact that cow's milk is made for cows and cows grow very, very rapidly as they're nursing. Humans are not trying to reach 400 pounds as quickly as possible. So is this milk helping us or hindering us? So while the dairy industry and publications and other industries that support the dairy industry are likely to use this study to show that there is no substitute for dairy milk for the health of children, to me this just reinforces that humans should not be drinking cow's milk. It stimulates unnatural rapid growth in children and adults, and we don't need it. What are your thoughts on this story? Let me know in the comments below. I have had a cat hair in my eyeball for this whole video so far. The next story of the day is that Danone is shelling out millions of dollars for a dairy-free ad. Danone just acquired So Delicious, which is a dairy-free brand that's been around for quite a while, along with other brands that do contain dairy. But they've decided not only to acquire this dairy-free brand, but to spend millions of dollars for an ad campaign with the slogan, Nothing Compares. Nothing Compares is a bold declaration of confidence that decadence and wellness can absolutely go together said an executive of the marketing agency Danone is working with to create this campaign. So while the dairy industry is frantically trying to show that other types of milk can't compare to the rapid growth stimulation of cow's milk, dairy-free brands continue to show that nothing compares to non-dairy products when you want taste, health, ethics, and environmental responsibility all rolled into one. So good for you, Danone. Now, all you need to do is convert all of the products you sell that do contain dairy to dairy-free options and remove all of the cruelty from your entire brand portfolio. This whole campaign seems to be a reaction to the dairy industry's new Undeniably Dairy campaign, where they try to show, once again, that nothing can beat good old cow's milk. I feel like a bit of a broken record, but honestly guys, every single time I do a Last Week in Vegan video, there's more news that is more and more clearly demonstrating how panicked the dairy industry is getting. They're desperate, guys, and I'm not mad about it. P.S. Look how awesome my shirt is. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you will have seen the shirt already a couple of times, and if you're not following me on Instagram, why not? Go do it. 
But uh, yeah, go vegan, baby. Into Soul Shine makes the best shirts, and uh, I love this one. Back to business. The next story of the day is that farmers are slamming an advertising watchdog after a sustainable organic milk ad has been banned. Dairy farmers in the UK are blasting the Advertising Standards Agency after it pulled an ad that claimed that organic dairy farming was good for the land. The ad was paid for by the fourth largest dairy company in the world, Arla, and was placed in a newspaper making multiple claims about the sustainability of organic milk, including that organic dairy farming is good for a more sustainable future. A reader of the newspaper where this ad was placed contacted the ASA out of concern, and after investigation, the ASA upheld that complaint and pulled the ad due to misleading advertising. The National Farmers Union and Arla both have come back against the ASA trying to fight for the ad to be reinstated. Despite their efforts to prove that organic dairy farming is good for the land or sustainable, the ASA upheld its decision, saying, We did not consider they had substantiated that organic milk production had an overall positive impact on the environment, taking into account its full life cycle. We therefore concluded that the claim was misleading. The ASA ruled that this ad cannot be run again and went on to say, we told Arla Foods to ensure that in future they did not make environmental claim about their products unless they held sufficient substantiation. So this is pretty epic news. One concerned reader seeing an ad that was spreading misinformation called the Advertising Standards Agency and something was done about it. This gives me great hope because if any of you guys are from Toronto, you probably will have seen this, but there are constantly ads all over the city that share incredible misinformation about dairy specifically. They really push misconceptions and misinformation about the health benefits of milk. And it's really frustrating as someone who has had my eyes opened to the reality of this industry and of this product and its effect on human health, among other things, to see that information put out there as fact and for the millions of people who are passing this advertising every day in the huge city of Toronto, taking in this information, whether it be subconsciously or consciously, and having those misconceptions reinforced. It's incredibly irresponsible of both the dairy industry and any advertising standards agencies around the world that allow these types of ad campaigns to go forward without being checked. So good on the UK Advertising Standards Agency for actually considering the complaint and doing their research and doing the responsible thing of pulling this ad that was sharing misleading and false information about the dairy industry. The next story of the day is that a vegan lipstick is raising funds for Planned Parenthood. The Lipstick Lobby is launching its debut product, a vegan lipstick in the shade Kiss My Pink, where all of the net profits will be going to Planned Parenthood. The company states on its website, Wearing this lipstick is a reminder that small actions can create big waves. It's a simple way to speak up and speak out against the threats to women's freedoms and health care posed by the Trump administration. This lipstick launch is part of a larger campaign, hashtag lipstick it to the man, and the company is currently working on developing further shades to raise awareness and benefit other social justice causes. Now this is a bit of a controversial subject because a lot of people, vegans and non-vegans, have trouble seeing how someone who considers themselves a vegan, especially for ethical reasons, could be pro-choice. Now, I haven't really talked about this on my channel. To my knowledge, I haven't gotten into the whole idea of being a vegan and supporting or opposing abortion and what that means. So I'd be really interested to hear what you guys have to say, what you guys think about this. So please let me know in the comments below whether or not you're vegan and how you feel about abortion rights. Are you pro-choice or are you pro-life? And if you want, leave a little bit more detail about why you feel that way and how your views on veganism relate to your views on abortion rights. If you guys are interested in this, I can definitely make a video about my personal stance on abortion and how I feel that fits into my ethical beliefs as a whole, but I'd definitely be open to talking about it. So if you guys wanna hear it, please let me know in the comments below and give this video a like so I know that you wanna see it. So now onto our rapid fire round. First up, Genesis Butler is a boss. If you haven't yet heard of 10 year old Genesis Butler, then you are missing out. 
I'll leave a clip below to her TED Talk. Yes, she is 10, and yes, she has a TED Talk, and yes, it is amazing. Genesis is a vegan activist. Check out a video to put a smile on your face and share it all over social media because guys, if this adorable 10-year-old passionate activist cannot get through to your friends and family, I don't know what will. Vancouver tries Meatless Monday. Students at 10 Vancouver schools participated in Meatless Monday back in May. The students ate meat-free meals at school as a way to raise awareness of plant-based eating and its benefits for the environment, our health, and the animals. Vancouver counselor Adrienne Carr, who kicked off the event, read a proclamation warning that the overconsumption of meat, dairy, and eggs is associated with many major environmental problems, including climate change, worsened human health outcomes, and animal welfare concerns. Overall, there is very little opposition to this event from meat producers in the area and throughout Canada. One pig farmer, Rory Holland, said that for him the challenge is convincing consumers to spend money for the premium humanely raised meats that he produces. It's not so much what you eat, but where it comes from and how much you're paying for what you're putting in your mouth. Anything like a meatless Monday, if it's going to cause somebody to pay more attention to how they eat, is fantastic. While I agree that it's very important for people to be aware of what they're eating, I disagree with Mr. Holland's view that it's where your food is coming from that's important and not what your food is. Because we all know that what your food is matters if what you're eating is actually a who. And last but not least, blueberry farms are replacing pig farms on Prince Edward Island. A recent income report released by Statistics Canada found that animal agriculture on Prince Edward Island, the smallest province in Canada, for those of you who are not aware, is rapidly declining. Instead, the farmers are profiting from plant-based crops, such as blueberries, potatoes, and soy. In a 16-year period from the year 2000 to 2016, the worth of the pig industry in Prince Edward Island dropped by more than $20 million, while the soy industry is valued at $16 million and the blueberry industry at $8.8 .8 million. The number of pig farmers have dropped drastically as well, from hundreds in 2008 to only a few dozen today. This is awesome to hear because guys, I love blueberries and potatoes and soy, and I'm happy to help Prince Edward Island consume all of those new crops. So that's it for this week's Last Week in Vegan. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a like and subscribe for more videos. Hit that bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. And as always, if I missed any important stories, let me know in the comments below, along with any of your thoughts, feelings, comments, questions, and concerns. This is a discussion, so let's get chatting. Thank you so much to my patrons for all of your support. Without you, I could not continue to make videos. If you enjoy what I do and want to support me, you can donate as little as $1 a month, and it really makes a big difference for me to be able to create this content for you. Watch my last video right here, and follow me on social media so we can be friends. Bye, guys.